and quietly commemorates loss is also pledged to the future and the possibility of a future. So that very thing that is mourned is by all sorts of temporal, uh, let's say, maneuvers and, and collapses and returns without recuperation. Homecomings that don't land at home and don't arrive necessarily. Nonetheless, it's a certain pledge to the future. So if one wanted to insist on this strange, now I can understand because her loneliness that might be in the company of a friend, that, lone, that undecidable loneliness which is alone and not alone, the solitude that is a population of two in one. Is that what she says? Mm -hmm. Two in one or one in two or split. I am two in one. I am two in one. That, again, if we could jam on this for five hours, I would be most grateful. Mm. I am two in one. Mm. It's not I am one in two, but I am two in one. Mm -hmm. um, why only two? How many is two? How much is one? Is one too many? Is it one too many? And so on and so forth. We're, we're not, these numbers are not necessarily stable either. So my sense is that she is performing a kind of uh, what Heidegger reading Hölderlin calls the excentrische Bahn, which is the eccentric path. She, she calls forth the core of the Heideggerian thought on thinking in order to divert, aberrate, and move away from it, almost like the little boy here. Mm. So this is where I wanted to bring us in for a landing, or maybe a hovering, because we may not be able to land or arrive. And note, I'm, I'm now going to speed it up because uh, we are constrained by ontic measures of time. You will note that there's a movement without transition, and many of us have uh, considered this already, a movement without transition via the famed and celebrated Schreiben Schrei, the Kri, a Kri, the Grito, Escrito, that became so famous since Derrida zoomed in on this. There's going to be a movement from the figure of the mother without transition to Nietzsche. And Nietzsche, she screams. <laughs> She is pregnant with the future. She, the most uh, quiet and polite and shyest then, finally, of men, knew of the necessity. So you'll see a transsexual move. Some of us have discussed, is Heidegger trying to birth Nietzsche? Is, there's a question also of legitimacy. This is post-war, where they're both in the toilet and in deep yogurt. So um, is Heidegger calling Nietzsche home? Is, what is the home? By the way, thinking is what welcomes to the home. So there'd be an allegory of, I can't think with you, you haven't welcomed me. Thinking is a welcoming. Mm -hmm. Thinking, um, but I don't know how this would work with Hannah and Eichmann and so on, but okay. nonetheless, Thinking and thanking are, in, in, are just so connected here, Danken und Danken. The, the pose and poise, and this would go perhaps to, um, to Mrs. Klein as well, from Frau Arendt to Mrs. Klein, as she was called, which is her great text on envy and gratitude. And let's quiet down Nietzsche, inject him with a little tranquilizer for a moment, which Heidegger massively does, because he's going to show how thanking is also killer. You, you want my gratitude? Let me offer you a cannonade of gratitude. Okay, let's quiet that down for a moment. In the background, <laughs> let him rumble. But envy and gratitude. So gratitude and thankfulness is indissociable from thinking. When you think, you thank. When you thank someone, you're thinking someone. And this is uh, where Heidegger's moving to. But let's just m move our home base to, there's, there's repetitions that he repeats the title, what is called thinking, what is called thinking. Don't, you know, don't, don't 
run after and rush for an answer. Let's pay attention to the way in which the question asks. So you have Heidegger, the teacher. There's, an, there's a pedagogical scene, as there might be here, um, coming into class or saying, was heiß, have you heard him? Was heiß denken? You know, <laughs> uh, and um, then that voice without transition, without framing, without holding up, and I think, um, that, that this might be something like um, an originary cut or something. You just wait, wait, um, dash. This is, I will teach you. So here's a teaching mise en abime or, or set inside, embedded in teaching. I will teach you what we call obedience. So here's already the ordering, but what is an order in thinking and what is on order in thinking, and gehalsam, kite, and listening. In English, I would translate it as heeding, right, which is obedient and hearing, opening the exfoliate, exfoliating. Now, how are we going to get this little boy to open up his ears? Okay, you. I will teach you what we call obedience. A mother might say, ruft eine Mutter nach, oder sowas, but it's the Ruf. The mother is calling to the little boy who won't come home. So our question in class was, how does she cable over to him? How does she reach him? He won't come home. What is home? Where is home? Is it the house of being? Is it language? So how does one bring the boy home? How does one bring Hannah Arendt home? to thinking, um, this boy won't come home. So this is the teacher's predicament. <coughs> How do you buy bring something or convey something? Does she promise him a definition? So will we be a, a mere philosopher? Don't forget, both Arendt and Heidegger are saying, I'm not philosophers. Both of them are. He's now a thinker. Philosophy has, has kind of disappointed both of them at different moments according to different um, valences of utterance, but they both protest. So this is um, what is called thinking, not what is called philosophy. So a mother will call out to a boy who won't come home. So the boy has already left home. Is this the pre-philosophical condition? So she won't just give him a definition, no, or is she going to give him a lecture as Heidegger lectures? No, again, if she is a, eine rechte Mutter, a proper mother. Yeah. Rather, she will convey to him what obedience is, or better, the other way around, she will bring him to obey. So how do you bring someone to hear, to heed? How do you exfoliate their invaginated ear? Um, I, do, I do have to just... Um interrupt for a moment to say, I think it's interesting that the proper mother does not offer definitions and does not lecture, because it comes very close to there being certain things that women ought not to do um, in the event. I'm just, I'm just hearing that. It's not that I think giving the definition or giving the lecture is something to be prized. I actually think Heidegger is, is going to move away from that toward a different kind of, of conveyance, right, as you, as, as you point out. Um, but in, in a way, he's also saying w women ought not to do philosophy. None of us ought to, ought to do philosophy in that way, perhaps. But there's, a, there's an interesting echoing there. But then again, I as Heidegger, Mrs. Ms. Heidegger, Ms. Heidegger, the mother here, will also not.